You've got a special edition podcast of the Read Aloud Revival. Before we start, I want to make sure you know that we have excellent lists of favorite Christmas books that you have access to for free by texting the word Christmas to the number 33777. Whether you're looking for Christmas picture books, novels, short stories, audiobooks, we've got you covered. Again, text Christmas to the number 33777 and we'll send you our best recommendations right away. Or you can head straight to readaloudrevival.com slash Christmas. This is the Read Aloud Revival podcast, Christmas Stories Edition. Hello, hello, everybody. Sarah McKenzie here. I'm your host for the Read Aloud Revival podcast, and today we have a special edition because in this episode, we're going to share some Christmas stories with you. For your kids in this episode, I've got some Christmas stories narrated by Jim Weiss. And for you moms and dads and grandparents and teachers and librarians listening, we are really happy that all of you are with us. I've got some deals for you on more audio stories like the ones you're going to hear today. Listen, if your heart needs some Christmas joy, you're in the right place. I'm glad you're here. I can't think of a better gift for the heart and soul than a story. And that's what we have for you today. As a gift to you, we have invited one of our favorite storytellers to come on the show today for storytelling purposes. (laughs) We've had Jim Weiss on the podcast multiple times. And thanks to his generosity, Jim and his wife, Randy, have allowed us to release a few of his Christmas stories for you to listen to today. So here's what's in store for today's show. Three stories. First, the nativity story, then the gift of the Magi, and then the beginning of the Nutcracker. So that last one, The Beginning of the Nutcracker, is a maestro classics recording performed by the London Philharmonic Orchestra, narrated by Jim Weiss. We are just airing the first 15 minutes of it. It's actually an hour-long production, and it is exquisite, as you will hear for yourself. So... Before we get to the stories, I want to tell you where you can find The Nutcracker, other Maestro Classic audio narrations, and more of these stories. I have a feeling after you hear these, you're going to want more. And you know, these make excellent Christmas gifts, you know, for your kids, grandkids, nieces, nephews, friends, whole families, right? Because stories are excellent gifts for the whole family. So it's not just a treat for your ears today, but also for your wallet, because the wonderful folks at The Well-Trained Mind and the wonderful folks at Maestro Classics have given us some discounts just for Read Aloud Revival listeners. So if you think these stories would make great gifts for somebody in your life, you can get some for your kids or your family members, um, friends, anybody you want, anyone whose heart would be warmed by a story well told. So the Maestro Classics are a classical music series for kids and families that were created for narrator and orchestra. So they're basically a double whammy. They expose kids to excellent stories and good language, and they contain some of the just absolutely gorgeous music performed, like I said, by none other than the London Philharmonic Orchestra. My family owns and loves the entire set. There is you know, Peter and the Wolf, um, the story of Swan Lake, the Bach and the Pipe Organ, My Name is Handel, Casey at the Bat, The Tortoise and the Hare, The Sorcerer's Apprentice, Mike Mulligan and the Steam Shovel. That one probably gets more play than any of the others at my house. Anyway, there's a whole collection of them, and I highly recommend them as Christmas gifts. That coupon code that is just for Read Aloud Revival listeners is RAR2020. 
And that code will give you 25% off any full priced single CD or MP3. It'll also give you 25% off the 12 CD or 12 MP3 collections. That's all the stories you can get 25% off. Um, and that's a great deal. So, you know, you could buy that 12 CD set and then stuff some of those in stockings or send them off to, you know, friends and family that you're sending gifts to or just do them as MP3s. But again, the code is RAR2020 and you can use that code on maestroclassics.com, M-A-E-S-T-R-O, classics.com. The other two stories you're going to hear today are other stories narrated by Jim Weiss, not with music, not with the London Philharmonic, but absolutely wonderful stories. And there are so many more of these at the Well-Trained Mind Store. They have classics like The Adventures of Tom Sawyer and American Tall Tales and Arabian Nights and Bible stories. They have myths. They have the Christmas A Christmas Carol by Charles Dickens. Um... They have funny collections, they have fairy tales, they have bedtime tales. For every age, child, for every period in history you could possibly be learning about, they have audio stories that go with. So I highly recommend these. You'll find them at welltrainedmind.com slash Jim Weiss. That's W-E-I-S-S. And the same coupon code actually works there, R-A-R 2020. At the Well-Trained Mind Store, that's going to give you 20% off most stories through the month of December. So I'm going to put these links, these coupon codes, and details in the show notes, of course, which, as always, are at readaloudrevival.com slash 168, since this is episode 168. So you can find those coupon codes there. Feel free to pass them on to anyone in your life who's looking for soul-nourishing gift ideas, because I can't think of a better way to nourish the souls of those we love than with a story. So without further ado, I bring you The Nativity Story as told by Jim Weiss, copyright 2014. The Gift of the Magi as told by Jim Weiss, copyright 1996. Both of those used with permission from The Well-Trained Mind. And the first 15 minutes of The Nutcracker, a maestro classics recording performed by the London Philharmonic Orchestra, narrated by Jim Weiss, used with permission. Hello, I'm Jim Weiss, and on behalf of Peace Hill Press, Today, it's my pleasure to read to you one of the most beloved stories in all the world, the Nativity Story. In those days, Caesar Augustus issued a decree that a census should be taken of the entire Roman world. This was the first census that took place while Quirinius was governor of Syria, and everyone went to his own town to register. So Joseph also went up from the town of Nazareth in Galilee to Judea, to Bethlehem, the town of David, because he belonged to the house and line of David. He went there to register with Mary, who was pledged to be married to him and was expecting a child. While they were there, the time came for the baby to be born, and she gave birth to her firstborn, a son. She wrapped him in cloths and placed him in a manger, because there was no room for them in the inn. And there were shepherds living out in the fields nearby, keeping watch over their flocks at night. An angel of the Lord appeared to them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid. I bring you good news of great joy, that will be for all the people. Today, in the town of David, a Savior has been born to you. He is Christ the Lord. This will be a sign to you. You will find a baby wrapped in cloths and lying in a manger. Suddenly, a great company of the heavenly host appeared with the angel, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to men on whom his favor rests. When the angels had left them and gone into heaven, 
the shepherds said to one another, Let's go to Bethlehem and see this thing that has happened, which the Lord has told us about. So they hurried off and found Mary and Joseph and the baby who was lying in the manger. When they had seen him, they spread the word concerning what had been told them about this child. And all who heard it were amazed at what the shepherds said to them. But Mary treasured up all these things and pondered them in her heart. The shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all the things they had heard and seen, which were just as they had been told. O. Henry was the name under which William Sidney Porter wrote his famous short stories in the early 1900s. Living in New York City, he achieved fabulous success with stories that included surprising plot twists and a view of human beings which accepts and smiles at our flaws as much as it honors our strengths. The Gift of the Magi is one of his most famous stories. THE GIFT OF THE MAGI by O. Henry One dollar and eighty-seven cents, and sixty-seven cents of that was in pennies. That was all she had saved through an entire year of making close bargains with the grocer, the butcher, everyone with whom she had done business. One dollar and eighty-seven cents. What am I to do? she wondered. It's not nearly enough. Her name was Della, though she would have proudly introduced herself to you as Mrs. James Dillingham Young. The Dillingham sounded especially grand to the young couple when they had married and taken this meager furnished apartment for eight dollars per week. That had been when everything was going so well. Jim was earning the princely sum of thirty dollars each and every week, and their future looked bright. Della, he had said, and he even got down on one knee the way they both knew it was supposed to be done. Della, be mine, marry me. And she, through her tears, had said yes. But later things took a turn for the worse. Jim's company had closed down, and he had had to take a job for a lot less money. Their plan to keep this little place only for a short time stretched for over a year and more. But Della and Jim loved each other very much, and as everyone knows, when you love and are loved in return, that makes up for a great deal. So it was that Della had scrimped and saved in secret for a year on her tiny household budget just to get enough money to buy Jim a Christmas gift. Oh, she knew she could never afford the expensive things she saw in the shop windows on Fifth Avenue. Oh, if I only had the money to go in there, I know what money's worth. Just imagine being able to spend it as if it were water flowing through your fingers. Oh, the things I would bring home for my Jim. But she had a dollar eighty-seven. She promised herself that somehow she would find a gift for him that was just as perfect as anything she could buy if she had millions. It was just going to take more time, that's all. Finally, she did find it. But now tomorrow was Christmas, and the dollar eighty-seven wasn't nearly enough. Well, she told herself, you're not going to solve anything sitting here crying. So she sat up and dried her eyes and glanced in the mirror to see that her eyes had not grown too red. And it was then, looking at her mirror image, that Della had the idea. She started to smile, and then she reached up and began to remove the metal pins with which she had put up her hair. You see, there were two treasured possessions that belonged to the James Dillingham Youngs two things of which they were most proud. One was Jim's elegant pocket watch, 
which had belonged to his father and his grandfather before him. The other was Della's beautiful, lustrous hair. Now she stood before the mirror, and her hair cascaded down around her like a shining brown waterfall. Don't stop now, Della, she told her mirror image. Hurry! She fumbled with the pins, trying to put her hair back up again, finally settling on just wearing a hat. Then she took up her little purse and carefully put into it the dollar eighty-seven savings, and then she rushed from the room and down the several flights of stairs to the street. She moved quickly along the sidewalk and went for several blocks till she came up before a sign that read, Madame Sophroni, Hair Goods of All Kinds. Della hurried up the flight of stairs, then stopped suddenly in front of the closed door. She hesitated for an instant. Then, standing there in that hallway, she said just one word to herself. Jim! And she reached for the doorknob and went in. Madame Sophrone sat inside, pale, cool, large. Della couldn't help but feel like a moth staring at a spider in the center of its web. Bravely, she said, Will you buy my hair? Down rippled the brown, beautiful hair. Madame Sophroni looked at it with a practiced eye and lifted a handful. Twenty dollars was all she said. And Della replied, Give it to me, quickly. Soon she was out on the street, rushing toward the store where the treasure awaited for her husband. There was not another one like it anywhere in the city. It was a silver watch chain. It was not heavily decorated. It was simple and elegant and perfectly handsome, just like her Jim, and it was the perfect match for his watch. She knew that, grand as the watch was, Jim sometimes looked at it on the sly because he was embarrassed about the threadbare old leather strap he used instead of a chain. Now he would be so proud. They took twenty-one dollars for it, leaving her eighty-seven cents. She hurried home, but as she went through her door carrying the precious watch chain, she caught a glimpse of herself in the mirror and she stopped short. At once she went to work, pulling out her curling irons and turning up the lights so that she might see more clearly as she tried her best to make up for the damage done by Madame Sophroni's hair clippers. Finally, her head was covered in tight little curls. Looking at herself in the mirror, she thought, Jim will probably laugh at how I look, but what else could I do? She hurried to make as fine a dinner as she could. Chops, potatoes, applesauce. Then she sat waiting until she heard his footsteps on the stair. Jim opened the door. He looked tired. He took two steps in, and then he stopped. He stared at her, just stared. He didn't laugh, he, he didn't shout, he didn't toss up his hands and demand to know what she could have been thinking to have chopped off her gorgeous hair like this. He just stared. Della couldn't stand it. Darling, don't look at me that way, please. I, I cut my hair and I sold it, and I'm not even sorry. I had only a dollar eighty-seven, and that wasn't enough, not nearly. I just couldn't stand the idea of not having money to buy you a Christmas present. So I cut off my hair. I sold it, and now I've bought you the most wonderful, well, it's just the most perfect thing. I know you'll love it, and my hair will grow back. You'll see. It'll be as pretty as ever. At last, Jim moved. He caught Della by the hand and drew her into his arms, and he held her and he kissed her again and again, and he gently ran a hand over her little curls. At last Jim let her go, and he drew from his coat pocket a package, which he set down on the worn arm of their sofa, and then he spoke. Della, there's nothing in the world that could make me love you any less or make you less beautiful to me. I love you. But if you'll look at the Christmas present I've brought you, you'll see why I... Well, just look. 
She snatched up the package and tore into it, and when its contents were revealed, she exclaimed with joy, Oh, Jim, I love them! But then just as quickly, her eyes grew wide, and she burst out crying. She dropped the gift onto the sofa. Jim drew her again into his arms. And there they lay, the pure tortoise-shell hair combs she had longed for for over a year, passing them every day in a Broadway window, studying their jeweled edges, knowing they were the perfect combs to set off her wonderful hair, but that they were so costly they were forever beyond her reach. Now they were hers, but her beautiful long hair was gone. Finally, she caught her breath, and she picked up the precious hair combs and smiled at him and said, My hair grows so fast. And she kissed him. Then she remembered. But wait, darling, look what I have for you. For Jim still hadn't seen the gift she had bought. Proudly, she held the watch chain on her outstretched palm. Look. Isn't it wonderful? I, I looked all over the city for it. Jim looked at the watch chain, and then he smiled at her, a big smile. He sat down on the couch, and he put his hands behind his head, and then he said to her, Della, let's wait a while. These presents are, well, they're a little too grand for us to use just now. You see, darling... Two days ago, I sold my watch to buy you your combs. And now suppose we just have that dinner that smells so good. The old, old story says that the Magi were three wise men who long ago began the ancient tradition of giving holiday gifts. In contrast, we've just encountered two modern people one might hardly call wise, each of them was willing to give away his or her most prized possession, just to give joy to the other. But I suggest to you that they were left with still another treasure, a much greater treasure, and that really they were very wise. All who are like them are wise, the wisest of all who give and receive gifts. And they are the Magi. Hello, I'm Jim Weiss. You're listening to music that tells a story, one of the most popular stories in the world, and it even comes with its own ballet called The Nutcracker. The story was written by a German author, Ernst Theodor Amadeus Hoffmann, or easily remembered as E.T.A. Hoffman. Two world-famous ballets and a wonderful opera are based on Mr. Hoffman's stories, but the Nutcracker is the most beloved of them all. The ballet takes place at Christmas and features adventure, enchantment, toys, candy, bright colors, but best of all is the amazing music, composed by the great Russian composer Peter Ilyich Tchaikovsky. Tchaikovsky's ballet music runs, perhaps I should say dances, all the way from beautiful and gentle to super fast and exciting. So let's get started with The Nutcracker. It's Christmas Eve. A young girl, Clara, and her younger brother, Fritz, are very excited because every year their parents have a marvelous Christmas party for family and friends. Clara tells Fritz, Isn't it wonderful? Candles in every color, boughs and branches of evergreen trees and bushes, and oh, the best Christmas tree ever. Yes, says Fritz. 
and so many brightly wrapped presents. I'll bet most of them are for me. The children's mother smiles. Now, Fritz, you know that isn't true. Be nice, and try for once not to muss up your outfit. Of course, mother. But we can hear Fritz and Clara's excitement in the music. The party guests are arriving, and the pile of gifts under the tree is growing. But Clara and Fritz are waiting for the most wonderful gifts of all. For their parents' special guest is the mysterious Mr. Drosselmeyer, or as they say in German, Herr Drosselmeyer. And he is a master toy maker and magician. Each year, Herr Drosselmeyer outdoes the gifts of the year before. Clara wonders, what can he possibly be bringing tonight? As more guests arrive, Clara's parents welcome them, and everyone who enters exclaims, just look at that tree. Servants pass among the guests offering food and drink, while Clara and Fritz invite the other children to play games. The boys, inspired by Fritz's toy soldiers, shout, attention, time to march, and they strut about the room. At a sign from Clara and Fritz's parents, the children clear back from the center of the room, for the grown-ups dancing is about to begin. The gentlemen bow to the ladies and ask, may I have the pleasure of this dance? The children stare wide-eyed, and Clara tells a friend, I just can't wait to be a grown-up lady then we will be the ones dressing in grand outfits and dancing elegantly. 
the room becomes one large flowing river of color and movement. Clara and the other girls form a circle and begin to skip in imitation of the grown-ups dance. And Fritz and the other boys take up their games again around the edges of the room. Then the front door opens once more, and Fritz exclaims, It's Herr Drosselmeier. Everyone's attention turns to him. Goodness, look at those huge gift boxes. What do you think is in them? Herr Drosselmeier directs the servants. Put this box here, and that one goes to the left, and so on. What is the mystifying man up to? With a gesture of his hand, the boxes fall open. Inside of each is a life-sized doll dressed in a multicolored costume. With one more gesture of Herr Drosselmeyer's hand, the dolls move. Each one steps from his or her box and... Look, Fritz, the dolls are dancing. The dolls step and whirl, almost like real dancers. How wonderful, says Clara's mother. Everyone is astonished by Herr Drosselmeyer's marvelous dolls. At last, he calls out, Halt! And the dolls stop moving. The toy maker announces, As always, I offer my thanks to our kind hosts. I have saved for last my special gifts for Clara and Fritz. Turning to the boy, he announces, For you, dear boy, here is the finest, shiniest trumpet I have ever made. Just right for your marching. And dear little Clara, here is my gift for you. He hands Clara a nutcracker doll, wonderfully carved of wood in the shape of a toy soldier and with moving jaws, strong enough to crack the hard shells of nuts. And he shows Clara how to use it. Oh, thank you, Herr Drosselmeyer. And she dances about the room with the nutcracker in her arms. But now Fritz's joy over his trumpet turns to jealousy over Clara's nutcracker. He tries to pull her doll away from her. Give me that! Stop, Fritz! Oh, no! The nutcracker falls to the floor and smashes. Clara's heart is as broken as her new toy. But Herr Drosselmeyer assures her, I can fix it. Taking out his handkerchief, he lifts up the nutcracker and ties the handkerchief like a bandage around it. There, good as new. The grateful Clara hugs the toy close and gently sets it in a doll bed beneath the Christmas tree. Here, little nutcracker, you can rest after your injury.
Meanwhile, Fritz, forgetting his jealousy as quickly as it came upon him, is blowing his trumpet and leading the other boys in a march around the room. But the music and the mood change when Fritz and Clara's grandparents tell the other adults, we would be honored if you would join us now in the Grossvater Tanz, that is, the grandfather's dance. told you stories nourish the soul. <laughs> if you'd like to give any more of these kinds of stories to the kids and families in your life this Christmas, feel free to use that RAR2020 coupon code to get some discounts on those. Again, you'll find stories like the first two that you heard and many others at welltrainedmind.com slash Jim Weiss. And you'll find more Maestro Classics at maestroclassics.com. And those all contain music performed by the London Philharmonic Orchestra. Thank you so very much for joining us today. I am just delighted to have you as a part of our listening community. We're doing Christmas school all month long in RAR Premium. So if you want to keep nourishing your kids with really good Christmas stories and want to do it with our community of like-minded mamas who really want to make good connections with our kids, help our kids fall in love with reading, and really fall in love with homeschooling ourselves, Check that out at rarpremium.com. You can join us for Christmas school, which we're doing all through December, and all the good things that we have lined up in 2021. You'll find out more about that at rarpremium.com. Show notes are up today at readaloudrevival.com slash 168. I wish you a merry, bright, joyful, and peaceful Advent and Christmas season. I'll be back on December 29th with an episode all about our upcoming 31-day Read Aloud Challenge. You don't want to miss it, but you know what to do in the meantime. Go make meaningful and lasting connections with your kids through books. 